In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, O Lord, for your love, for your grace that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. Once again, Lord, to learn your word, to understand your word, to understand the secrets, the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, as we have gathered over here today, you speak to us, O Lord. You guide us, you reveal to us. Teach us the secrets and the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, we want to learn more about this grace and this law. And help us, Lord, to live in the balance between grace and faith. Not to live in extreme grace or in extreme faith, but in the balance of grace and faith. Lord, as we have gathered over here, we are your people. We are one accord in the spirit. We are anointed with your word. We are anointed with the Holy Spirit who is living on the inside of us. And Lord, in whatever we do, in whatever we say, we make a decision, Lord, that we want to come in agreement to your word. Lord, it is your word which is what is transforming our lives, changing our lives completely. The reason why we are here, Lord, studying your word today is because it is your word that is setting us free. We make a decision to believe your word today, that your word is what transforms and changes our life completely. And we believe, Lord, that we are anointed with your strength and with your ability. Not by our strength, not by our ability, not by our authority, but we are anointed by your grace, the grace that has been given, that has been poured onto our lives. We believe and we receive your word, Lord Jesus, that your word is what transforms our life completely. And we believe that we are not ordinary, normal people living in this world, but we are extraordinary people living the lives of faith. We believe that your word is what transforms our life completely. We believe that your word is what changes our life completely. And Lord, the reason why we are here studying your word, learning your word, understanding the secrets, the mysteries of your kingdom is because today we are no longer just normal people living normal lives. But today we are your people living the life of grace, by living the life by grace through faith. We believe that there is salvation to every one of us right now here. And we believe that we are completely changed. We are not just normal people studying the word, but we have an imagination based on this word. And this imagination on your word is what helps us to understand your word in an intimate, personal way way. Lord, we thank you for walking, walking in our midst. And Lord, it is because of you, it is because of your word today, we are here. We are anointed here and I bind every spirit of destruction, every spirit of disturbance. I uproot it, I curse it, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Never again to return into this class, into this session. I use that we are all anointed, anointed here to keep our focus on you, anointed over here to study your word in such an intimate way that when people see us studying your word, they can see a big change taking place in their lives. We believe that your word is the reason why we are here and we are saved. Not because of what we have done, but it is all because of what you have done. And what you have done is that you have died for us. You have taken our punishment. You have taken our place on the cross. And we make a decision, O Lord Jesus, 
to believe your word because your word is what changes, transforms our life completely in the name of Jesus. I believe your word, O oh Lord. I receive it through the faith. I believe it and receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I believe and I receive your word, which is the everlasting word for our life. And I believe that we are anointed right now to operate in your grace, not under the law, to understand what you have done for us. And we thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have done, the great things that you are doing, and all the greater things that are yet to come. We believe and we receive it, O Lord Jesus. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jesus. So, um, praise God. So, we have been studying on uh, operating in grace and operating in law. And we have been seeing this for quite a few uh, days now, four days now. Praise God. So, let's uh, start with Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Two. We'll read it from KJV. Okay, for by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Do you see what he's saying right now? For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. It was not by our own strength. It was not by our own ability. But it was by the grace of God that we were saved through faith. So for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. That not of yourselves. It is no longer by our own strength, by our own ability, by our own power. It is not by our own strength not and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. The gift of God. So God is now, God, God, say, God is saying that he loves us. And he's saying that he has died for us. He has taken our punishment. He has taken our place on the cross. And now we are no longer ordinary people living normal lives. Today he's saying we are the people living the life by grace through faith. So we are called to this life. We are called to live this life. Okay, right now in this planet Earth. But I can only live this life only when I start believing in faith. See, if there is no faith, then the grace is inactive. Okay. Because we receive from God by grace through faith. Praise the Lord. So every minute of our life, what is the most needed is our faith in God and our faith in his word. And if this faith in his word is not put, okay, then I will not experience what the Lord has for my life. Instead, I will continue to live under sickness, to live under poverty, to live under depression. And if you see in people's life, the reason why they are not living according to what God has called them to live is either they have faith or they have grace. They're not operating in grace and faith. And so every minute of our life, what we are called to do is operate by grace through faith. And that's what he was saying right here. Let me share the scripture again. See that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. So now it is not about what you have and what you and I have done. It is about believing and receiving what Christ has done for me on the cross. See, God has blessed us with his grace but not necessarily just because he has blessed us 
does not mean we are receiving the blessing. And so every minute of our life, the labor is needed and the labor is to believe in faith in what God has called me to believe. Believe in faith in what his word has said to me. Believe in faith in what his truth has said to me. And the Bible says that the Lord has set you free. The Bible says God has given you the freedom. God has given you the liberty. So now we are not, we are not just normal people living normal lives. Let me tell you something. We are the people of God living the lives by grace through faith. So the grace of God has been given and the faith of God has been given. So the question is, am I operating by grace through faith or am I continuing to live under only the faith or only the grace? See, there is this animosity between people saying, I am a grace person and I am a faith person. And there is this enmity be between people where I'm, I'm believing in grace and I'm believing in faith. But the Bible says it is by grace through faith. So there should not be just, uh, I, I believe in faith and faith and faith and faith. It should be, I believe in grace and faith. Because you know why? If you see people living life saying, I live by faith, by faith, by faith. Or if you see people living lives, I live by grace, by grace, by grace. Let me tell you something. There will never be a change in their life. What is the reason? The reason is because it is by grace through the faith of God. Through the faith of God. And so what God has called us to do is every minute, every moment of our life, what we are called to do is learn how to live by grace through faith. And see, this is not something that we're just supposed to uh, uh, read about. This grace through faith is something very important in our life. Okay, and if we don't start living according to this word, if we don't start living uh, according to the truth, then we will continue to live without any manifestation. We will continue to live under the law. We will continue to live under the, uh, uh, under the life of darkness, life of sin. And so every minute of our life, what God has called us to do is learn learn to live in faith. What God has called us to do is learn how to respond to every situation and every trial with the word of God, with the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are you understanding? Yes. Praise God. So God has given us everything we need to live this life. But the thing is, are we using what God has given to live this life? Is the question. And let's study on this. Now let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Uh, verse number 1. And what, what shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? <clears throat> For if Abraham were justified by works, he has wear off to glory, but not before God. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. Death, okay. For death, for to him that works not, but believes in him that justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Now, okay. Here he's saying, what shall we say then that our Ab uh, Abraham, our father, pertaining to the flesh has found? What has he found? Okay, um, let's read this from the NIT. Abraham, see that Abraham was humbly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable 
to God, he would have something to boast about. But that was not God's way. In God's kingdom now, as we... See, the law was not given at that time. At, uh, at the time of Abraham, the law was not given. The law came... We saw this on, I think, Monday or Tuesday. The law came 430 years after Abraham. So Abraham was not uh, having... Uh, he did not have the, um, the law. So what they needed to do was just believe. And believe what? Believe in the promise. Now, I was speaking about the difference between the grace covenant and the promise covenant. See, the promise covenant was when, see, today, even today we have promises. But the promise covenant for Abraham was, God will do it someday. God will do it someday. God will give a child someday. God will do this. God will do that. That was an old covenant. But now the promise that we have in the new covenant is the promise of grace under the grace covenant where God is saying, I have already done it for you. And this is the difference between the promise covenant and the grace covenant where the promise covenant was God will do it. But the grace covenant is that God has done it for us. And now this promise covenant was the covenant that Abraham was operating in where he was believing that someday God will do it because they did not have uh, the grace like how we have. And so as, and, and as he was believing that God will do it someday, now what happened was the Bible says, okay, his good deeds, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. You know, we just saw Ephesians 2, 8. If you continue in the 9th verse, it says that, that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Verse number 9 says, not of our works, lest any man should boast. The word lest, okay, if you are ever wondering what is the meaning of the word lest, L-E-S-T. What is the meaning is avoid. Avoiding. Okay, not considering. And so when the Bible says not to, not of any man's uh, works less to boast, that means to avoid that person from boasting. So now it's no longer their strength. It is the strength of God given in their life. Now here, if, the, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. <clears throat> but that was not God's way. That was not God's way. In the world, you had something to boast about. But according to God's word, now today we no longer have anything to boast about because what we are boasting about is Jesus who has died for us, taken our punishment, taken our place on the cross, and that's why today we are anointed with his word, living the life of grace. <clears throat> living the life under the grace of God, living the life under the faith of his word. And that's what the Bible says, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. But the scripture tells us, Abraham believed God. He believed. Abraham believed God. See, now Abraham believed God. That means now it was no longer what he did. It was him believing in what Jesus had done for him. And what he was believing for was Jesus will do. Actually, in what, what they were believing was Jesus will do. But today in our lives, when we are believing, we are believing that Jesus has already done it for us because now we are in the new covenant. So the grace covenant is what? The grace covenant is believing in what he has already done. And that's why there, many people think there were two covenants. Okay. But actually there were three covenants. You know what were the three covenants? The promise covenant before the law came. The promise covenant where they, they were believing that God had given the promise that someday he will do it. Because that was in the old covenant. Then came the law covenant where if you do, you will receive. And then in the new covenant came the grace covenant. And what the grace covenant is, that he has already done it for me. He has already finished it for me on the cross 2,000 years ago. Praise God. So for the scripture tells us. So, so now, if Abraham had done it by his own self, his own ability, then he would have had something to boast about. For The word for means because. Because the scripture tells 
us because the scripture tells us that Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed in his word. Okay. And God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Abraham believed in God. Abraham believed in the word. And God counted him. God accepted him as righteous. God looked at Abraham as righteous, not because of what he did. It was because of the promise that he received. And, that, and that's why Abraham was under the promised covenant. But then 430 years after, what came? The law. The law. And when Jesus came in this world, and the moment Jesus said, it is finished. Now we were operating no longer under the, the law, the old covenant law, but under the new covenant grace. And this grace is still there today and it will be here until the world passes away. This grace. So we are no longer focused on what we have done or what we need to do or why God is accepting us because of what we did. But today, the reason why we are accepted in the sight of God is all because of what he has done. And does anybody want to know what he has done? What he has done is he has set you free. He has set you free from every lie. He has set you free from every thought. He has set you free from every word of the Satan. So now what God is saying is we no longer need to live under curse. We no longer need to live under bitterness. We no longer need to live under that worry, that fear, the bondage. Because we have God's word, which is the word that is bigger than any, as any other problem, any other situation that we are going through. Now, instead of focusing on the situation I'm going through, instead we need to focus on God's word, the grace of God. And the grace of God that has been given to me is the word of God that sets me free from every lie of Satan. Because now we are anointed with the word of God. We are anointed with the truth. We are anointed with the promise. And that's why because we are anointed with the promise, now we have received the grace of God in our lives. So for the scripture tells us, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. So now it's no longer what we have done, not our wages, not our debt, debt but we're living under the grace. In the kingdom of God, it is nothing about what you and I have done. See, many people think it's because of what we have done. I did this, I did that. I did this, I did that. Let me tell you something. It is not about what I or you have done or you will do or what you have not done. It is purely about just believing in Jesus and accepting Jesus as our Lord, as our God, and as our Savior. So now it's no longer what you and I have done. It's believing. We are called to believe. Believe in the one whom he has sent. And in other words, what he's calling us to do is believe on the truth. Believing in the truth is the answer to all our problems. Believing in the grace. And that's what we are called to do. Believe in the grace of God. Believe in the truth of God. Believe in his word. Because everything in the kingdom of God comes by grace through faith. See, if you have grace, but there is no faith, there will be no manifestation. If you have faith, but you don't have grace, there will also be no manifestation. It was by grace through faith. Now let's go to uh, a scripture, okay? Uh, let's go, let, let's see a passage, okay, in the Bible that speaks about grace and law and gives an example, okay? Let's go to Acts, Acts, Acts chapter 3. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. 
Okay, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from his birth was being carried in. Each day, every single day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he, when Peter and John were about to enter, he asked for some money. Now, what happened here is the Bible says a man lame from birth. If you look it up, okay, if you see the uh, Acts chapter 4, you see this man was crippled for 40 years, more than 40 years, because the Bible says he was around, I don't know, more than 40 years old. He was more than 40 years. He was around in his 40s. So that means for more than 40 years, he did not get the experience of walking. See, if I was in this man's place, I would not be worried or I would not be troubled by the by people not giving enough money or things like that. What I would be troubled is by seeing other people walking, enjoying, and I'm not able to walk. People walk, people walking, running, talking, having great lives, living great lives, and I'm sitting here every day begging. I would not be concerned about the money. Yes, I would be concerned, but more than that, I would be concerned about how can they live such a good life and I can't live anything. I have to struggle here for more than 40 years, just sitting down here, just asking for money. And... Uh, at, no, no, he, see, he, they, he sees Peter and John about to enter. He asked them for money. Now, that person, that man, thought Peter and John would just give them some money. But what they did not know was Peter and John would give something more than money that was more life-changing than money. And you know what is that? Grace. They gave them the grace. They gave him the grace. Okay. And uh, praise God. You see what is happening here. When he said, when, when he saw Peter and John, just give me a minute, okay? I'll just put my laptop charger. Just a minute, praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so now he, this man did not know that what Peter and John were about to give him was going to change his life. They did not know that. He did not know that. It was going to change his life. He did not know that. And so he was just begging at Peter and John saying, give, give, give. But see what happens. Peter and John looked at him intently and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Okay, now, um, praise the Lord. Let's read this from the KJV. Let's go to the KJV. Hallelujah. See, there was on the six. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up. And walk. Now you see, God is giving us the you know, Peter is giving this man something that is greater than gold and silver. And you know what was that? Grace. It was the grace of God on this man that was 
that Jesus has already healed him. It was the grace of God in, on this man's life that Jesus has already healed him and Jesus has given him the ability to walk, to jump, to run. But he did not expect that. See, one of the reasons why we are not living the lives that God has called us to live is because of a very low expectation. If you see many a times, you see people, they have a very low expectation. Let me tell you something. Our expectation needs to be extremely high. See, if we are going to expect low, if we are going to expect only the low, then we will live according to the low, a li living a low life. But when I start expecting the word of God, expecting high, I will live a high life. I will live that life under the grace. I will live like I will live that life under the strength of God, under the ability of God that God has put in me. Now here Peter learned, and Peter does, 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 doesn't say, "Please, uh, Jesus will heal you in the name of Jesus. You will rise up and walk." He says, "Rise up right now and walk." The healing has already taken place. Jesus has already healed you, but it's about your faith. You taking the word of God, you taking that faith and saying, I believe I receive it now in Jesus' name. That's what we are called to do. That's the grace of God that you have spoken right there. And the faith is that believing. The faith is your action corresponding to that message. If you are saying, I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name, but your action is not corresponding, you're living in grace, but you're not living in faith. So the manifestation will not come. Because it is by grace through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about what you have done. It's not about what you and I have done. It's about believing in what he has done. And what he has done is he has set me free from every lie, every demonic thought of Satan. Hallelujah. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. See, God knows where the operation needs to take place. You know where the operation needs to take place here? His feet and ankle bones. They receive strength. He immediately stood up, started to walk, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, the one thing is so surprising about this man is he left the money behind. He left the cup with the silver and the gold. He left it behind. He said, I don't want it anymore. I have Jesus in me and that's what I need. I don't need to beg. In the new covenant, you don't need to beg. In the new covenant, you need to believe. And that's exactly what this man said. I don't want to beg for silver and gold anymore. I'm in the new covenant. I want to believe. Believe in whom? Believe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He believed. And that's why he leaped up. He jumped. He did not just uh, so slowly hold on to the gate, hold on to Peter's hand and John, John's hand and slowly stood up one knee first, then the second knee and trembling, he stood up. That was not the case. He jumped up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and they knew, see, they knew that it was he. I'm reading verse number 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with the wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed, healed had held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wonder. And when Peter said, Saul, he answered unto the people, 
you men of Israel, why marvel at you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? You know, Peter understood and John understood. If they wanted to continue experiencing these types of healings happening, what they needed to do was give co complete credit, give complete praise to God. Because the grace is not about what you have done. It is about what God has done. And that's why he's saying it is not by your own power. It's not by your own holiness. It is by the grace of God that God has bestowed upon our lives. And when we understand this, there will be freedom. Hallelujah. So did you understand? Any questions, any doubts, anyone? Any testimonies? Anyone would like to share anything? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, would anyone like to share anything? Praise the Lord. Anyone? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Angelica. Yes, you can unmute. Okay, so you might remember this. This is like this this testimony is like similar to what happened last time. I had pain. But this time it was on the left side of my stomach, and then I prayed in tongues again, and then instantly it vanished, and it vanished quicker than last time. Praise God! Quicker than last time. Wonderful. The Lord is working. You know everything that we are experiencing in our life is all because of what He is doing in our midst, and what He is doing is He has given us the grace. And so if we want to experience the grace, it is through faith. And that's what he was saying. You believed, you prayed in tongues, you believed you were healed, and you saw the healing. Wonderful. That's God. Amazing testimony, Angelica. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else would like to share anything? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to pray uh, for all those people okay, who are having a problem, any type of problem with their digestion, okay, where they are not able to digest their food properly or quickly. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, your word says that when you speak to the mountain, the mountain has to obey. I speak, Lord, to every person who is struggling from the digestion, uh, problem with the digestion. I uproot it. I curse it. I cast it out, never again to return into their lives in the name of Jesus. I bind it, I uproot it, and I curse it, and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I lose that they are completely healed and restored and delivered. The life of God is flowing in them. The love of God is flowing in them. The blood of Jesus is flowing into them. And they are completely healed and restored and delivered. And they're completely prosperous in Jesus' name. There is no more sickness. There is no more infirmity. But they are healed. They are the healed of the Lord. And there is 100% restoration in the name of Jesus. We believe it and we receive your word, Lord. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay, we'll close with the ending prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us. The secrets, the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, we love you. We thank you for helping us understand your word. And we believe that we are here today because of your word, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth. And we believe, Lord, that we are in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, with your righteous plan that you have put in us. We believe and we receive that we are no longer ordinary people, but we are extraordinary people living the lives of faith according to your word. We believe it and we receive it. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we believe, Lord, that your word is what is changing our life. We believe, Lord, that today we are here. We believe in your name. We believe in your word because your word says heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will always remain. We believe it and we receive it. 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank amen. you. Amen. Jesus, praise the Lord.